Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and I just am getting ready to do a video for you, and this will be the beginning of that video. Um, I got out a bunch of trays of beads to show you kind of what I have, how I organize at least some of it, because I have too much to have it all out, and then I'm going to make a piece for you guys. But I wanted to say real quick, you may notice my channel's different, and that's because I was watching Rafi and Klee, who are two artists that I just love, and they are so inspirational and I learned a lot from them and they were talking to uh, Rafi was talking about the fact that you know I don't even remember the whole video but just basically don't do things for the money do things because you like them and, and and he really did a good job I'm just kind of butchering it but anyway it got me thinking that you can't He's basically don't chase what you think people want. Do what you want to do. You know what I mean? And um, I feel like I'm crooked here. And, you know, I have been trying. What will people want to watch and that kind of thing. And I'm not going to do that anymore. Because, you know, no matter what video you do, there's going to be people that like it, people that don't like it. And I'm going on seven years on my channel. No, six years on my channel the end of next month. I'll be then starting my seventh year. So I think it's May 27th will be six years on YouTube. And I started this channel to be creative and to teach people things I knew and to learn from other people and to meet other creative people. And that has happened. I have so many wonderful friends. And I just am very grateful for the YouTubers I'm friends with and the non-YouTubers that are dear friends as well. And... I wouldn't have all these wonderful people in my life if not for this channel. So I'm very grateful for that. And I decided I want to get back to what I started this channel for. I didn't have a mission statement. But if I had, it would have been to create things, to make things, to show people how to make things, to inspire other people to be creative. And boy, you guys took off with it. I have some friends that started out as subscribers. And they started showing me the things they were making and trying to give me credit for that. It's like, uh-uh, I didn't teach you how to do that. You did that on your own. Um, and I was very flattered they gave me credit for it, but you know who you are. But you did that on your own. If I had a little tiny bit of it inspiring you, I'm very honored. But that's what I wanted to do. Inspire others, meet other creative people, share ideas. And like my friend Fran has given me so many ideas for this channel. I haven't done them yet. My friend Bev, she is one of the ones that has done such amazing beadwork and she tries to give me credit. She sent me some wool felt like four years ago, I think it was, and I still haven't gotten a chance to use it. So we're going to use that soon because I have some projects I wanted to do with that beautiful felt. It's like I started the channel, I started babysitting, and time flew by. So, you know. So anyway, I'm at three minutes. I'm going to stop this video now, and then I'm going to take you over to my work table, give you a little tour, and then I'm going to make a piece for you out of all the stuff I have out on the table. Not of all of it, but out of that stuff, I'm going to pick a project, and we're going to make it on camera and show you how to use oddball things that you can get from broken jewelry. If you go to the thrift store or you go to an antique store and get a little jar of broken jewelry, you get the weirdest pieces. And I've got one picked out already, but I'm going to show you several things and how I lay out my table. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. it depends on your storage system and how much room you have to store. But I'll be right back and I'm going to show, it'll be just a second for you, but it'll, I'll be right back. i got to move the camera. Okay, here's my work table. Let me stand back so you can kind of get an idea of how much stuff is on the table. It's a lot. And it looks overwhelming, but there's more under there. Those boxes there are more of this type of stuff. And then up on that shelf there is more of that kind of stuff. But those are more particular projects. This is a sorting where I'm kind of sorting through. This is pieces to take apart for beads. Here's some southwestern turquoise inspired. They're not real turquoise. They're either plastic or stone faux turquoise. All my uh, lacy medallions and, um, you know, I love this type of filigree stuff here. And so I have a whole bunch of filigree. Um, chains, all kinds of chains. A bunch of findings that I've been buying and I've got them put away. This is some uh, charms and pendants in here. 
um, more beads. This was a red, white, and blue project I did, and I just left that together. And I have trays that are Christmas. I even have another 4th of July one. Now this is larger pendants and charms. I've got keys, and I mean, here's a large cross, and these are just pieces that I've put aside out of my different boxes and bags. Some are in bags, some are loose. You know, just all kinds of interesting and unique pieces on this table, on this tray. And then I've been going through and trying to figure out some interesting pieces. Like I said, this is my sorting, where I put them as I sort them into some of the other ones. And some of the unusual pieces I have, and one of them, I guess the most unusual is this one. And that's why I thought we would make something out of this. Isn't that gorgeous? It, it's like lace, but metal. It's got two holes on top, so I could hang chain on it. And then another hole at the bottom, we can make a dangle. So I'm going to go through all of this and pull some items out to make a piece out of this. And then I'll be back, and we'll do that on camera. But I want to, I don't want to make you, if I had you sort through everything with me, this would be an hour long video or more. Because sometimes it can take me longer to go through everything and figure out what I want to use than to actually make a piece. But this is going to be the focus of my channel, making all kinds of things, not just jewelry, but a lot of jewelry out of the old jewelry and out of beads that I bought new as well. Because this is a mixture of mostly used, but you can see there's some new strings up there. And, you know, like these kind of unusual pieces, trying to figure out what I can do with some of these. Because they're absolutely beautiful, but I don't want to restring that. Um, and maybe I will, I don't know. But just all kinds of unique and different. That's wood, or at least it looks like wood. It could be plastic. Feels kind of like wood, but you never know. Just so many unique and different things. Look at this gorgeous tassel. I love that. And it's like this is an, an earring. I don't know what I can do with that, but it's just so interesting to me. So I have just, and there's just kind of messes in here too. When you get a magnetic bracelet, you end up with a mess. But anyway, so I'm going to sort through all this, and I'm going to put a bunch of different things on this table, and then we'll go through and we'll make this piece together. And I will try to add pieces that I can use to design earrings to match with it, so that what I add to it, I can make earrings that match it. So I'll be right back when I get everything together. Okay, I've got my new camera mount and hopefully it'll behave itself because sometimes it falls. But I think I've got it secured pretty good. There, see, it keeps falling. So I'm just going to keep this right under it. And I'm watching through the camera, not through under the camera. Now, what I did is I got this piece here. And I don't know if the camera's picking up how truly pretty this little piece is. Obviously, this was one of those linked collar necklaces, and this is one of the top corners. But this is all I got. So I have two choices of how I want to use it. Well, I think the best way is to use the top and attach chain from both sides. And then this will be directly between them, and I can hang something below on that. So what I've got is a bracelet that I thought I could take apart and just snip it. And I'll use some of these beads to do this piece. Now I don't know if I can do a pair of earrings that'll match because this is so unique, but I'm not going to worry about it right now because not everybody has matchy matchy. So we're for now going to cut this necklace and pull all the beads off. I don't know where the knot was, so just, whoops, we're just going to pull all the pieces off. And this is a very, very tight. They did this with very tight Oh, hopefully they didn't glue the knot inside this big pretty bead. It's very possible they did. Which will be sad if I can't use that pretty bead for something, but I might be able to get it out. It's not the first time I've had that happen, but wow, they stuffed this very tightly. Okay, so what I thought I would do is I want to have um, two beads chained onto here. So I've got um, loop head pins that um, will attach to there and I'm going to put a bead and I thought I would do the blue bead and attach one to each side up here. I thought those were so pretty. So 
Um, basically, I'm going to take my looping. Oh, and I've been telling you about my original looping tool. This, when I first started making jewelry, all I had was this that my husband found at a yard sale for a buck fifty. It's a vintage jeweler's tool. And I had the only pliers I had were really long needle nose pliers. I mean, the noses were like this long that he got through, uh, shoot. He's a, he's a maintenance mechanic, and he was working at a bakery at the time, and those trucks that came around to sell tools, Snap-on, or one of those, he got me these pliers, the only ones he could find at the time, and they had really long, and that's what I learned to bead with, were these really long pliers. When these came out, I was so much happier. And then, I've been, I used this for many years, and then I was on a website one day, and I found this. And then, I can't remember where I bought it, and then my friend Colleen sent me this pair which is a bigger pair and that's wonderful because when I want to make bigger and I forgot what she called it so Colleen if you're watching would you be kind enough to tell us again what this tool is called but I'm thrilled with this because it's much bigger than the one I have and there's times I want to make bigger links so that works out perfect but you can use the ones that are double loops and they work just as good this I just happen to have these and love them they also have a looping tool you can buy, which I've used, but I'm not real impressed with. I do have it. My husband bought it for me, and once in a while I'll use it, but it's it's kind of hard to, uh, I don't know. I, I One side's easy, the other side, when you're up against a beat or something, maybe it's user error, I don't know. But I have a hard time with it. But we're just going to bend it back a little bit and then loop this around and just make a nice loop on this bead. Now I can't, I'm not perfect, I'm not going to make a perfect loop. So this bigger one is what I'm going to put here because it's kind of got to go behind. So we're going to see how that looks before I do the other one and see if we like, If well you're not going to be able to tell me, but I'm going to see if I like it. How's that? <laughs> and. Um, you might ask, why do I loop it before I do this? Because it's really hard to get a clean loop when you're looping through something. It's easier to get it looped, open it, and reclose it than to try to do this. I, there would be no way to get a clean loop because that's a big piece of metal right there. As it is, sometimes it's hard to get it to loop back in. It's a little bit harder when I'm behind a camera, but I'm going to do it behind the camera so that you see every bit of it. That's the next, that's the other thing with restarting my channel back to crafts. We're going to also make sure everything's in full view and I'm not out of frame anymore. So again, I'm going to take another head loop pin. Now if you don't have any of these, you can take a head pin if you don't want to wait to get some. Cut off the head and just make a loop at the bottom and a loop at the top. So you make your bottom loop, put the bead on, and then make your top loop. Really easy to do. Now these are not going to be perfect matches, but they're lamp work beads and they're going to at least go together. There we go. And then again, I will take my little looping tool and you make a loop. And I just kind of get it to a certain point. I cut it. Oh, I didn't. I usually secure it because it will go fly across the room. I might need to nip a tiny bit more off of that. So let's. You want to kind of aim it down because it will shoot, which is not a problem except for the fact if you step on it, that hurts. So you want to keep them from going into your carpet. If you have a hard floor, maybe not quite as bad, but I have really, really deluxe uh, carpet in this room because this was our son's room and we let him pick out the carpet and he picked a really thick. Now it's not like when you walk in, it doesn't look like shag. It's not really shag, but it's a really thick plush. It was one of the more higher grade carpets. And uh, it's pretty old now, but it's still a very thick blue carpet. So it's kind of hard to see things that are in it. Any carpet it is. So just be aware of that when you are cutting wire. That you might want to keep it aimed toward the table or even hold it with a finger. Okay, so I think that'll look good. 
Now what chain are we going to use? I found this necklace and it's absolutely perfect because right in the middle, got to find it again, there is a large loop where something obviously was hanging. So I'm just going to take, the, and this is all recycled jewelry. And I've been doing this since our kids were little. I've been buying jewelry, taking it apart, and making stuff. Now back then, I did a lot simpler jewelry. I didn't do steampunk back then. Now, I'm not going to hook that straight to that, because I thought it'd be fun to do another bead. And I love these little roses. And you can buy these new. Let me see. I think I just saw a string of them. Oh, these are similar. No, these aren't roses. But see this string here? You can buy them similar to that with the roses. I do believe. These are gorgeous too, but I want this smaller one. Um, Michaels and Hobby Lobby have some great beads. And so if you're looking for beads, that's the best way to go if you're starting out. Uh, if you want a specific bead, you can look there first. And then Etsy and eBay continue to be a really great resource. I'm going to try to make this one a little smaller on top to match the bottom just a tiny bit better. There we go. See? That's kind of the secret. Kind of make it I just use felt by the way this is just a piece of what 24 cent does it have a price sticker on it oh this piece does it not but you know if you go to Hobby Lobby Michaels Joann's and you buy a square of felt for like I don't know 28 24 cents 33 cents something like that that's what this is okay it's not gonna be perfect but it'll be a little bit smaller than the one below Oh, there we go. So, and I'll use this one to hook to that because I'm going to have to open this to get on the chain. And I think that will be less noticeable because this one's so little. So now we're going to open this back up. And hook, just hook that little thing on there like that. And just close it back up. And thanks again to my lovely friend, Happy Bird, for teaching me how she does her tutorials like this. So thanks to her, you can actually see what I'm doing. And if you don't know who Happy Bird is, oh please, go look up Happy Bird's Glitter Nest. But I can't imagine if you're here, you don't know who she is. If you love to craft, you need to check out Happy Bird. And she doesn't need any help from me. She's got a big, beautiful channel. But if by some fluke of luck you have not heard of Happy Bird's Glitter Nest, I urge you to go check her out because you will be blown away by all the crafts that she does. I learned a lot from her. And I have a lot of stuff in my craft room because of everything I learned from her. I'd never used glitter. I'd never used clothes chain. Oh, I learned so many fun things from her channel. And then she showed me how she records her videos. And that was a game changer for me because, see, I started to pull again, force a habit. Um, but we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to stay under the camera. So, oh, I used the wrong thing. Ha ha, look what I did. My goodness, I used one of the head pins. Oh, I, that one shot all the way across the room, hit the door. Okay, that was me not paying attention. So we're going to do it again. Okay, now we did it right. So if you have more than one kind of head pin on your table, make sure you use the right one. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. These I got at Joann's. They were maybe 10 bucks, and they are really great wire cutters. See, I put that one down, and that one did not also fly across the room. When you hear it ping the door, you knew you, you know you uh, kind of blew it. <laughs> now, sometimes if I want it rounder, I'll go up here and kind of round, whoops, kind of round the end just a little bit, and then kind of come around using the very tip of my 
there that's what look at now that was better so now I get to see if it looks okay because that one was a little bit bigger I think it'll be okay though you know that's the thing you got to remember when you're doing handmade jewelry please 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 never expect it to be perfect because that's not the point of making handmade jewelry Making handmade jewelry is to make a one-of-a-kind piece. Well, and you can make more than one. Like if you really, if you had both these sides and you loved it so much you wanted to make two, that's fine too. But making unique jewelry, how let's put it that way. Making unique pieces that nobody else has. And that's always a lot of fun. Now we get to hook the chain on. Now you could put a jump ring in between, but to me that's kind of distracting. I don't think you need it. Um... I would personally rather open up this but if you prefer to have a jump ring there is absolutely nothing wrong with that now sometimes when you have a bead in the way it takes a minute you got to kind of really yeah see you can tell I do not have it tilted quite enough there we go you got to be careful because you don't want to break that head pin, you know what I mean? So, let's get that piece of chain in there. It's not cooperating, is it? Okay, hold on. Oh my goodness. Let me try using my... There we go. Just got to get it on there, whichever way you can, and then get it closed before the chain comes back off. Oh, I just broke it. Don't do that. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. Guess I need to make that upper loop a little bigger. That is so funny. Okay, well, we'll start over. I don't t do second takes and hide my mistakes. I know a lot of people do to make the video shorter. But you know what? This is real life, and this is what happens. You use the wrong head pin, and you break off. I, I've done that more than once. I was more concerned... Well, I was kind of concerned about that, but I was more concerned I would bend the loop enough that it would break. Not that I would snap it when I was uh, trying to hook it on. Well, that's pretty funny. Okay, let's try third time's the charm, right? Third time's the charm. All right, let's try this again. Like I, there's another way to hold it, and that's what I usually do. I'm rusty, but I'm not going to be rusty for very long. Okay, I don't know if you can see. I've got it right under the camera, but when you're holding little bitty things. But I'm just looping it around like that. There we go. See? All right, now I'm going to hook it back on there. I think I used the little side. Okay. Got some fuzz from the felt on there. See, that's what I was afraid I was going to do, actually, was um, bend this loop up enough that it broke. Even though they're meant to do that, they often break. Well, I'll tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. And, yes, crafting materials have gotten much more inexpensive and more affordable. But you kind of lose a little of the quality in the mix. Okay, now let's see if we can get that chain on again. Let's try it again. Okay, this time I'm going to... Okay, I think this one will go on a lot better. There we go. And this is not something I've done a lot, to be honest with you, hooking on to chain like this, although I chain a lot of things together. But again, I haven't done as much of it in recent years as I used to. So we're going to get back into the practice of it so that uh, I can make cool things for you guys to enjoy and teach you. And see, what I liked about this chain is it had 
not only a lobster claw, but a nice, there's a jump ring where the necklace ends and the extension starts. And you'll find when you buy, like let's say you buy a blue, book, blue box from Goodwill, you'll get a lot of great stuff to make this kind of thing. These are all from Goodwill. Well, they're from boxes or bags that I've bought. Now, okay, that one I opened a little bit better this time. Now, let's see if we can shut it without breaking the thing. Oh, no, 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 come on, you can do it. There. Haha. -ha. Okay. So there's how that looks. Doesn't that look cool? I really like it. Now we can do a tassel. Now we could do any of these. They combined blue and pink. Now I've got a pretty pink heart and I think there was one with blue in it. So we could even do something like this for the tassel. Uh, this and we've got pink bead and I think over here I have some small blue beads. That's green. Let's see. Let me see. Oh my goodness. Oh look, I've got a fiber optic bead. Wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah, let's do that. And this just scissors. It's got one of those weird clasps. I'm going to cut this right here on the tray of beads. Kind of out of your vision, but oh, two of them flew over here. So let's take this time a head pin and we'll put the little heart on there. And then we'll put one of these. What do you think? I don't know. I don't like how those two sit together. So maybe we won't do a heart. These have pink in them, so we can even do like this pretty pink bead. And then we could do a blue. There's also some metal beads here. There's a little heart. We could actually, you know what? We could actually do that. Look, look what we can do. Okay, look what we can do. This will be fun. This is what I love to do this. This is why I love to do this kind of jewelry. It's so fun because there's no right or wrong. And I've told you that for six years almost. There's no right or wrong when you're an artist of any kind. And because if you make jewelry, you can call yourself an artist. You absolutely can. Because making anything is being an artist. If you create something, you're creating art. Now, if you don't like... See, that's stiff. So I need to find one. This one has a much bigger loop on it. Look at that. And so we're going to open another one that's bigger. And But this is why I like doing stuff with old jewelry. Let's see, can we get it on there? I think this will work better. Let's see. It might still be too thick. Yeah, look. Okay, well sometimes you have to do a jump ring. And I happen to have 2,000 of them sitting over here. Those are those jump rings? No, those are C-clasps. Or I don't know what they're called. Spring clasps, C-clasps. So let's get a jump ring. I've got like every jump ring I have over here. Let's find one the right size. This would be a good one. I get these at, at uh, Hobby Lobby. They're $3.99. And when they're 50% off, which is at least once a month, you get them for $2.00. And you get, what, 100 in the bag? These are 6 millimeter heavy. See, I like the heavy gauge jump ring. And you get 120 pieces. So, I mean, unless you make an awful lot of jewelry, this will last you a very long time. Just get one. Hey, look at that. Now, this makes you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Now, these are split rings. You want the split rings because you want to be able to open them. If you buy the closed rings, then you can't open them. And those are fine if you're going to hook on to them. But if you have an item that you have to, like this, I couldn't put this on a closed ring. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's see here. That's my biggest beef with these, uh, close, these uh, jump rings sometimes is they are sometimes hard to maneuver. Well, and especially, it wouldn't be so hard for you because you're not going to be behind a camera. 
It really does make a difference. Okay, so I got it on the jump ring. Let's hook it closer. You want to use two pliers. That's why you should always have two until you kind of rub it. You can feel it. You can feel it scraping against each other. Then you know that it's not going to be uh, open. Let me make sure. Felt like it was closing close up, but doesn't look like it is. Let's see. I think it is. Okay, now we're going to get our loop pin. Let's see if I can find one of the ones we already were using here. And then we're going to hook this on here, which is fine, but now we've got to make sure that when we do the top, it's hanging the right way to... Now, if you already, if you already did not have one already opened, you could just loop the jump ring around both the head pin and the heart at the same time before you close it. Okay. Okay. Now, see that holds the jump ring, you're going to want to have it sideways. So if you want this to hang, you're going to need a sideways hoop up here. See what I'm saying? This one's sideways, and it's going to have to go sideways up there as well. So now we're going to put whatever beads we want on here. And I've got this small blue. And I'm almost thinking a small pink would be better. Let's see if we have one over here. Let me see what I got. I got a lot. I mean, trust me, I have a million small pink beads, but I don't want to turn the camera off. Now, I have some really small ones if we want to go smaller. This is like a crystal. Whoop. See, that would be pretty. Then we got a little blue pulling the blue and a small pink. And that pulls the pink out of the stone and out of the blue bead. And that's what I like to do, is I like to have fun. Now, that's going to hang over here. So it'll be interesting to see, because it's going to be off kilter just a little bit, if it looks okay. If it doesn't, then we'll just have to take the charm off and say, this will be a charm-free necklace. But I think it might look okay. Now I'm going to make this, because this has to, okay, let's see how we have to make this hang. Okay, let's see. This loop goes straight, so that loop is hanging down straight, so we need to go through it this way. And we got to make sure that this is hanging that way, so we're going to go this way. And it don't, don't worry if it messes up, because you can fix it very easily. Hang on to that. There, no more flinging these, because I'll be the one to get it in the bottom of my foot. But the thing is, I also have two small grandkids that come in here sometimes, so I'd feel terrible if they uh, got that in their foot. So I really got to be careful. Because they come in here and craft every Friday with me. And, oh, that would not be fun. I'll make sure I vacuum before they're in here tomorrow. Okay. Because I promised them, they, we didn't get to craft last Friday. Um, so we'll craft tomorrow. Let's see. All right, is that straight? This? Okay, no. Okay, so I got it wrong. Okay, that has to hang like that. So, we're going to take this and... Okay, hold on. Got to get in here. Hard to do. And turn this like that. And then it'll hang right. It's easier to do when you don't have a dangle. You might want to do that first and then, well, you can't really, can you? Well, yeah, you could make this and then put the dangle on it. You really could. Okay, now let's hang this on here and see if, how it looks. Okay, let's see. My goodness. Okay. Now we're going to put that through this loop and then hook it. Oh, I can't even see the... Oh, there it is. 
Okay, there we go. This is why it pays to have a pair that's really tiny. And these are my really good needle nose because then I can get them into those small spaces. Let's see. And if, sometimes they'll get a little scuffed up. But especially if you're making it for yourself. Now, if you're making it to sell, that can be a problem. I should have made the loop a little bigger, probably. But let's see. Let's see how it hangs. I don't think it really matters that it uh, hangs to the side. Let me get it where you can see it. Let me get my camera adjusted up before it falls again. I don't know. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. Here, I'll lay it on the felt so you can see it. And then pull the camera down. Doesn't that look cute? And that was so easy, even though I, if I had not screwed it up twice, it would have been even easier. And then if you don't want the chain that long, that's easy to cut a few links off and uh, uh, reattach everything. But I like them kind of long, and I think this is good. I'm going to put this on my Etsy shop. Now, if you use a charm that you have more than one of, like if you have three or four of them, at least three, you could do earrings that had that charm and these beads. But I'm not going to worry about doing earrings with it because not every piece has to have a pair of earrings. You can't. I sell necklaces all the time online that are either handmade or that I've found in my boxes and they don't have earrings. Anyway, I'm really happy with how that came out. It was a long tutorial. I, there's just no way for me to do them sooner, quicker, I mean. But I hope you enjoyed it, and it shows you how to take a charm bracelet, and that was on the charm bracelet. These two beads were not, but these were, these were, and the charm was. Now, if I'd been forced to use everything that was in there, then I would have just put probably this one, because I don't really care for that bead much. Or I might have even put, but that would have been too big. I think that would have been too big as well. So really, there was no other char beads that I could have really used. Unless I put another one of those, and that would have been overkill, I think. So it's okay to pull things in from another piece. And this was that bracelet I cut. And this was off of something else. I don't know what. But these are all, um, those are all beads over on this tray that I've pulled. So there, there's a few new beads, but most of this is off of stuff. And that might have been new, that little pink one. I don't know. If it's new, it's old, because... If I bought this new, I bought it probably 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So it's not a brand new bead. But there you go. What fun is that to take something kind of unique and different and make a nice spring necklace out of it. So I'll be back soon. I'm going to leave this set up for today. Do a few more pieces before I put it away. So I'll make a couple more videos up for you. Uh, showing you some more pieces I made, what I used to make it, and what I made. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you will give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of this type of stuff, please subscribe. It's totally free. And if you hit the little bell, it'll just let you know. What subscribing does is it lets you know when your favorite YouTubers have a new video. Especially if you hit the little bell notification um, I'll let you know. And if it's in your subscriptions, then you can find it on your subscription list. But thank you so much, and I'll be back soon. Bye.